This is Zowie's new 360Hz XL2566K, and like many of you, I'm very skeptical of whether this is worth picking up. I've previously criticized Zowie's lack of monitor progress, and I've also mentioned why current 360Hz offerings are just not that special. But this one is different, and before we dive into all of the details, which trust me, there are a lot, uh, I want to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of this versus another 360Hz monitor that I've previously reviewed. So what I'm about to show you is high-speed camera footage which was filmed at over 1500 frames per second and it's this recording here in overwatch running at 360 hertz so very very slow motion here the recording is actually running over four times faster than the display itself on the left we have the 360 hertz asus pg259 qn and on the right we have the new 360 hertz xl 2566k from zowie and the difference is pretty subtle to notice unless you really know what you're looking for but let's take a closer look in this shot here for example with the gun spinning take a look at how much less motion blur the Zowie has compared to the Asus. This metal part has no ghosting at all on the Zowie, but on the 360Hz IPS, it actually trails behind by at least four frames. And to be totally clear, both displays here are in an almost identical phase of this individual refresh. That's something that you can only really dial in on a high-speed camera. Both of the monitors, as you can see, have just ever so slightly started the next frame. In fact, the 360Hz IPS is slightly further along in this comparison, yet the previous screen refreshes are way behind and have yet to fully dissolve. The 360Hz TN though, I mean that's really impressive, almost no ghosting at all, uh, and by the way this is without any DIAC or ULMB. So it's a 360Hz TN panel at the end of 2022, that's both late to the 360Hz party and you know TN panels are not really something people are interested in moving forward. Clearly though, after what we've just seen in that quick side-by-side -side comparison, this monitor is a decent bump forward in terms of you know, actual performance, so let's take a closer look. Now one of the biggest questions that I see is whether you can actually notice 360 hertz in the first place. So here's some more slow motion footage. And yeah, when you compare it side by side to 144 hertz, the difference is pretty obvious. Animations at 360 hertz are just so much more fluid, camera panning is a lot smoother, and everything just appears more lifelike and easier on the eyes. But what about 240 hertz? Well, it's subtle, but you can see a difference. 360 hertz, at least when slowed down, like a lot, does show clear and smoother animations compared to 240Hz. In this comparison here, you can see the gun spinning a bit smoother at 360Hz on the right here. 240Hz looks a bit more juddery in comparison. Then in this shot, watch this part of the building and this edge of the wall. You should be able to see a difference between 240Hz on the left and 360Hz on the right, which looks smoother. This comparison is probably the most noticeable difference between the two, but still, we've got to slow things right down to demonstrate how that difference looks. Now, one way to explain the difference between 240Hz and 360 hertz is that if you're in game and you have like a reference point to compare with like some text on a wall or like some high contrast objects in the sky for example that you can kind of notice the characteristics between the two as you're swapping between the two refresh rates it's actually pretty easy to notice a difference especially on this monitor when 360 hertz is already pretty good but if you're just dropped in some like random part of the game which you don't have those reference points and especially if you're just focusing on the game itself it is really hard to tell which refresh rate you're playing on. 360Hz monitors though, especially this one, do have a reason to exist. There are plenty of games that can be consistently run at 360 frames per second, like Overwatch, Valorant, CSGO, Rainbow Six, and so on. So if you're rendering those frames in the first place, why not have a display that can actually show you them? Sure, the difference is subtle, but for these competitive style games, I'll always take the fastest option. Now, as some of you might remember, I wasn't a huge fan of the first generation 360 hertz panels and I ended up making a video switching back to 240 hertz and that ended up being a really popular video but in a nutshell I just didn't feel like I was getting the full 360 hertz experience due to the pretty slow response times on those first generation panels. This monitor though is different it's a newer generation panel which is a lot more responsive and is much better suited to 360 hertz. These charts here show the 
actual response time values that I've measured with Nvidia's new LDAT. And what we're looking at here is how long it takes for each gray degree transition. Basically, how fast the pixels can switch color. So from zero to 255, which would represent a black to white transition, that takes 7.1 milliseconds. From a gray value of 160 to a gray value of 96, that takes 3.7 milliseconds. This chart shows the overdrive mode off, which is honestly pretty slow and you just shouldn't use. But when we switch over to the high mode, that result improves drastically. We're now looking at a response time average of just 1.5 millisecond, which actually makes this the fastest monitor that I've tested. The overshoot on this mode as well, also known as inverse ghosting, is not that bad, only around 13%. Around that 20% level is where it really starts to get noticeable. As for that last premium overdrive mode, that does speed things up a little bit more. Now a 1.3 millisecond average response time, which is insanely fast, but the inverse ghosting on this mode is pretty noticeable. So here's what those three modes look like using the UFO ghosting test from blurbusters.com. The high mode, just as the results show, is pretty much the setting to be using. Visually, it does look the best. Something that's pretty cool on the Zowie 360Hz though is that you can actually tune the overdrive with a slider between zero and 30. This is something that every high-end gaming monitor should have, but unfortunately, you just very rarely see it. So for example, I found the fastest overdrive mode with practically no overshoot or inverse ghosting was a setting around 11 to 12. Almost no overshoot there at all, and the response time average is still pretty respectable at two milliseconds. And here's what that looks like. Overall, a very clear image. I do wonder though why Zowie didn't have this as one of the preset settings out of the box though, maybe instead of the current high mode. Either way, it's pretty easy to set. In fact, even with this overdrive mode, which has practically no overshoot at all, that would still make the 2566K the fastest monitor that I've tested in terms of pixel response times. Cranking that overdrive slider up to 15 to 17 though is probably what I'd recommend. Still very minimal inverse ghosting there, but measurably a faster result. In fact, at almost the same overshoot level as the also 360Hz PG259QN, the new 360Hz Zowie has response times that are a whole millisecond faster. That is a really impressive result. And as we saw in the intro, that does translate into a large visual difference as well. In fact, here those two are in the UFO ghosting test alongside the Acer Nitro 390 Hertz, which uses the same panel as the Asus, it's a pretty massive difference. In game, this will translate to cleaner frames and less trailing and ghosting. Then we have a comparison with the ViewSonic 240Hz and Zowie's own 240Hz XL2546K, where the ViewSonic IPS has more ghosting and the 2546 also has more ghosting, but also more inverse ghosting. So clearly this new 360Hz is a very fast panel indeed. But the Zowie has another trick up its sleeve and that's Diac Plus. You've probably heard me rave about this on other Zowie monitors and here it's also really good. It's a motion blur reduction feature which turns off the backlight between screen refreshes to prevent ghosting and on some panels it can be really effective. And on the Zowie 360Hz, it's pretty nuts. Easily the clearest image that I've seen from a gaming monitor yet. Even when compared to the ViewSonic 240Hz which has extremely good backlight strobing, the new 360Hz manages to edge it out just slightly. So if the games that you play can be consistently run at 360 frames per second, this is the setting that I'd recommend using. especially considering that it's fully brightness adjustable. It's not brightness locked like a lot of other blur reduction implementations and at max brightness as well it can get seriously bright. 280 nits with Diac set to premium and a massive 330 nits when set to high which honestly doesn't look too different in terms of blur. So if you game in a seriously bright room and you are a fan of Diac or blur reduction implementations this is definitely an advantage to consider. And for those wondering here's what the strobed image looks like at 360Hz and 240Hz versus versus the XL2546K does look a little bit clearer, but the 2546 is already so good that it's pretty hard to top. So response time performance, simply insane. Fastest that I've tested, you know, just a lightning quick TN panel. Unfortunately, a lot of people will avoid it for exactly that, right? TN panel, TN colors, so to speak. A lot of people don't want that poor color performance moving forward but that's actually where you'd be very surprised. Now sure, this panel, like any other TN panel, does not escape the bad viewing angles if you're looking at it horizontally, but if you're looking at it straight on, as you should be, the colors aren't actually that different to a lot of other high refresh 1080p IPS panels on the market. In fact, they're a lot better than you'd expect. By just using the standard color profile, dialing in the color vibrance back to level 10, and then tuning the RGB values to 99, 96, and 100, we get an almost perfect 6500K 
Kelvin white point with zero color tint. We also see a delta E average of just 1.2. That means that the deviation between reference colors online and the measured colors on the panel are not that different. Although the yellows and oranges are just a touch oversaturated as you can see here. The contrast ratio is pretty average at best though, a touch over 900 to one. But to be fair, this is where a lot of IPS panels land as well. So web browsing, even watching back some of my own videos, which I'm very particular about when it comes to the colors, they honestly look totally fine. Now keep in mind beyond color vibrance 10 is where online content starts to get a bit oversaturated. So I've been switching between two profiles, one for gaming and then one for casual desktop use. And there is a dedicated button on the back of the monitor where you can quickly switch between them. Where this panel is limited though, in terms of colors is the color gamut. Uh, in other words, how saturated and vibrant the panel can get before the colors start clipping and blobbing together. And yeah, it is an issue here, just like it was on the XL2546, but it is also a problem with the ViewSonic 240Hz and the IPS 360Hz. So if you really want your colors to pop off the screen, I'd actually consider the 1440p options that I've reviewed previously. The colors on those monitors are simply insane when it comes to the vibrance. I'd also consider those monitors if you just simply care about image quality, resolution, and how good your games look. If you play single player games where you want to be immersed and involved in the game world, 1440p will serve you a lot better, obviously, than these ultra fast response times. And with GPUs getting incredibly fast, high refresh 1440p is likely the better suit for most people. It can just do so many things so well. What it won't do though is offer the most sweatiest and competitive experience. Games like Overwatch, which I played a bunch of on the new Zowie, just feels so, so good. You're constantly getting above 360 FPS on a decent rig. Uh, the game models and textures are simple and clean enough, so even 1080p looks pretty good. Playing fast DPS characters on this monitor really is something. Is it though a huge upgrade from 240 Hz? Well, no, you'll never hear me say that, especially 240 Hz on this monitor, which already looks pretty clear. And that's mostly the same for the XL2546K and the ViewSonic 240 Hz. If you have either of those monitors, I would probably stick with them unless you're really keen on 360 Hz for some reason and these really fast response times. No doubt though, there are plenty of average and below average 240 Hz monitors out there, which the new Zowie 360 Hz would be a nice upgrade from. Overall though, I have to say it is really exciting to see monitor technology get faster and faster and to finally see a worthy 360 hertz panel in action now quick note on the exterior uh, it's almost identical to the 2546k it's a very stripped down ergonomic experience for your setup the stand offers extreme adjustability very small footprint and there are some basic buttons and a joystick at the back that's pretty much it many of you who currently have a zowie gaming monitor will feel right at home here it just doesn't feel that different on the exterior i've always been a fan of how they've packaged their displays and the 2566k is no exception so I'll definitely be keeping this monitor within arm's reach, especially with Overwatch 2 coming out, which I'm pretty keen to get into, but I'm also pretty keen to try the new Asus 500Hz TN panel. So I think the biggest challenge there will actually be getting 500 FPS consistently in, you know, gunfights and, you know, pretty intense battles. But either way, that's going to be really interesting to kind of compare to the new 360Hz from Zowie. Now, a couple more things just to wrap up. This is the only 360Hz TN panel that I've seen so far on the market. So the pricing is going to be a little bit more expensive than you see with you know the other 360 hz ips options at the moment which have seen quite a price reduction recently there are just so many monitors using that specific panel that they're naturally just going to be a bit cheaper considering the superior performance of this panel though of course it's probably worth a bit more extra but how much extra that is completely up to you but yeah otherwise it's an ultra fast 360 hertz tn panel from zowie i think it was definitely worth the wait after a bit of a drought from them in terms of the monitor market if you're interested i will leave it linked down below as always a huge Huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.